Now then, people, and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show, and it's time for your Middlesbrough versus Leeds United preview. It is a game I am absolutely bricking it for. Um, Danny Dyer, as Danny Dyer would say, I'm absolutely shitting myself. Um, this is do or die time for Leeds United, isn't it? Um, this has been recorded prior to the Leicester West Brom game, the Cardiff Southampton game, but regardless, them. Results could have gone our way, might have gone our way, but ultimately Leeds United need to do their business and we need to pick up three points. Uh, if we don't pick up three points, promotion is looking, by the automatic spots, very unlikely. Um, you know, because ultimately for me, we need to put some wins on the board before Ipswich play because, you know, we're going to play Middlesbrough and QPR before they even kick a ball again. And if we can put six points on the board, that puts a totally different kind of pressure on Ipswich. But it ain't going to be easy. Uh, Middlesbrough now undefeated in nine. Unfortunately for them, just missing out on the playoffs. They need a hope and a prayer to get there. And I don't think they will. Results might go. Look, I think Middlesbrough fans know it's done. Yeah. Um, so regardless of how good they've been of late, uh, it's just not enough. But that's not going to dissuade Middlesbrough. Believe me when I say this is a huge game for them. They see it as a rivalry, North Yorkshire, back in the day. So that still stands for them. Uh, and the crowd will be pumped for it. Michael Carrick won't let these players rest on their laurels. And they'll have a sense of pride as well. You know, you've got, you know, proper pros. Proper pros in the likes of Johnny House and uh, in the likes of Lewis O'Brien. Even Luke Aylin, proper pros. Thankfully for us, Luke Aylin can't play in this game due to his loan. Neither can Sam Greenwood. Just on Luke Ayling, massive loss for Middlesbrough. There's only Finn Azaz, who's got more assists than him. You know, and he plays in the 10. He plays, you know, the the tip, if you like, just behind Latty La. Uh, Luke Ayling's at right back, but we know all about Luke Ayling's qualities. Well, some of us do. Some of us did. Uh, some League One, League Two, I was told. But anyway, this isn't time for me to push the old guard propaganda, as I tend to do. Um, although I am going to be back in Bamford. That's going to be interesting to see how... Daniel Farker opts to go for this game in what is a must-win game. It'd be nice for Patrick Bamford against his old club to go back and score. I believe he will have a part to play in the running. Maybe he'll go Joseph, I'm not too sure, but we have to believe, you know, Daniel Farker's been saying it in the presser, mourn all you like, do what you want. But ultimately, I invite you, I invite you to believe. So we need to take that invitation, sign that RSVP and say, yes, we're on board. You know, because every game now, not... Look, every game's a must-win. Has been for weeks now. We've been terrible since the international break. They need to abolish that March international break. It's pointless. I think there's only about four games that were competitive. Unfortunately for us, it was involving Wales. And the majority of our team is from Wales. And that's meant that Conor Roberts has got injured as well. I just want to say as well, those were criticising Farker for his treatment of Nonto, bringing him off early. Look at what's happened with Roberts. He said in the presser, we overused him and therefore haven't been able to manage his, his, his muscle injury and he's going to be out now. You know, he might be back for Southampton, but if we're being realistic, folks, he's not going to play any part in that. He might come off the bench, but he's not going to have missed two games and then be expected to start against Southampton. Not for me anyway. So that, of course, means Kamara's going to have to come back in. We need him to come back in anyway. Um, I've said... I've. I don't think Archie's looked as good as in midfield as people thought he would. I think a lot of that's due to the fact that we've had a certain rhythm, a certain style of play, and you're dropping him in there with a few games left to go. I get he needed to change something up, but Gray hasn't looked amazing in midfield. He will do. He will do. He will go on to play the rest of his career there, probably at a massive club outside of Leeds United, competing for Champions Leagues, hopefully not too, uh, not in the too distant um, future. But him being back at right-back, I'm OK with. You know, a centre-back partnership of Ampadu Road on Fairport left-back. That's your best bat four. That's been the best bat four this season. Meli in goal. Kamara in Gruyev in midfield. That's been our most uh, profitable midfield with them two in there. I actually preferred the left-hand side build-up when Kamara's there over Gray. I think Gray was more fluid from left to right, but it sort of ruined the shape a little bit. For me personally, maybe I'm wrong. Nonto, right wing, he was licking his lips, licking his lips against uh, Blackburn. All it takes is one goal. One goal for him, for any of that front four, and we'll be cooking on gas. I, I do believe that. I don't want to make any wild predictions like I have because I've got them wrong this season and it's been painful and it's hurt me and I'm tired. I don't even know what... Look, Leeds can win the game and hopefully will win the game and other results go, you know, go our way. But I'm at that stage where it's like, I'm just tired, just please win. I go, I go to bed on a night saying, please, Leeds, don't let me down this weekend. Don't let me down, please. And I don't think they will. I don't think they will, you know. We have to win this game, and hopefully we will. You know, they're, they're a great side, Middlesbrough. You don't go unbeaten in nine in this division, regardless if it draws, wins, whatever. 
by being a poor side. But they have been inconsistent. And hopefully now we get them in a period where they're going to now drop a little bit. Let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope they are on the beach. Luke Aylin is a massive, massive loss for them. It goes without saying. Middlesbrough fans will tell you that. But it's not just him, is it? You know, Latte La. Latte La has been on fire. You know, he scored against us in, in the reverse fixture. I think he got two off the top of my head. But he's been a man on fire in recent times as well. Five goals across his last five games for Middlesbrough. Um, you know, this Finn Azaz, who they bought him from Plymouth Argyle, he's been a top signing. Isaiah Jones has been good all season. Johnny Housen and Lewis O'Brien in midfield are very good as well. We know this all too well. I would have liked Lewis O'Brien at Leeds. That season we were in the Prem, and we all know about Johnny Housen, captain of Middlesbrough. You hope that he might, like, take the foot off a little bit. <laughs> we know that after... We beat them at Ellen Road when Click scored that wonder strike. He did have a word in Click's ear and say, you know, go on and go on and win it now. Go on and win it. So let's hope he's got a little bit of that mentality going ahead of this one. But we currently sit third in the league uh, after 43 games. Suffered a defeat more recently against Blackburn at home as well, which is disappointing because that home record's gone. The penultimate home game of the season and you lose it, it's disappointing. But I think it'll actually help Leeds United that we're away from home. Uh, Middlesbrough got us a draw, actually positive for us. Big up Luke Ayling for the assist more recently against Ipswich. Won all. They could have won it at the end as well. Luke Ayling almost had a chance, obviously. We watched that game on, on the channel. Um, but despite them being in great form and winning five and drawing four in the last nine, the, the playoffs is done for them. Um, so they're playing for pride, but play with pride they will. Because, you know, they, I don't see... I'm hoping they're on the beach. I don't see it, though, because it'll be a fire, fiery atmosphere. Believe me when I say they really dislike us. Really, really dislike us. Um, I made the mistake once in Stockton of going into a pub called the Mucky Duck, and that's what that was its name with the Leeds top on, and I got dogs abuse and quickly uh, quickly left the establishment. I can't lie to you. Um, <laughs> that was in Norton. Um, yeah, way back when. But I didn't realise the rivalry was just as vociferous in, in Middlesbrough. It's not so much in, in Leeds, but trust me when I say the crowd will be pumped. They will not let their players rest on their laurels. So when Leeds roll into town, it's a massive game for Middlesbrough. Um, historically... Leeds United have been the stronger side in this head-to-head. -head. Um, you know, we won six of the last 11 matches against Middlesbrough, so history is on our side. But as we've known, yeah, history was not on our side against Sunderland and proved to be the case. However, history was on our side against Blackburn and they beat us 1-0. But look, when you look back at that game, at that fixture, when you've had time to, you know, simmer, Leeds United should have won that game. And on another day, win it 10 times, you know. Um, we just missed a few. Um, we weren't clinical enough, but we're talking inches here. There was one for Nonto where he's punched the, the back post because he knew how close he was, you know. Um, it'll be a tough nut to crack, though. I think it'll be quite low scoring, not like the game at Ellen Road. I think finish 3-2 because um, Middlesbrough have late defensively have looked really good. I think they've got three consecutive clean, clean sheets at home at the Riverside as well. As I said, Lati La on form. Uh, some, yeah, they're, they're a decent side, a good championship side. Um, look... What I will say, though, a bit of history for you, Leeds boss Farker has only faced Bristol City more than Middlesbrough without ever losing a game. So he's won six and drawn one. So history is on Farker's side. So let's hope we can we can, uh, we can can <laughs> tap into that. Look, Middlesbrough, though, I think if they didn't have all the injuries, would definitely be you know fighting for the top six. There's like seven players out for them and some top players as well within that within that group, Paddy McNair and Co. So they're big losses for them. Um, as I said, I gave him a lineup at the start. I think we know Kamara has to come in now. Great right back, but I wouldn't mind the same lineup as last time, but with Bamford up top if he's not going to play Joseph, which I don't think he is. Um, but I'm really nervous for the fixture. Uh, I can't lie, it's, it's going to be. Um, it's going to be a battle, but one hopefully Leeds United can come out of the other side for. Michael Carrick will set them up. I think it'll help us being away from home because maybe the onus will be on Middlesbrough, especially with them out of the playoffs, wanting to play for pride, wanting to win the game. We've actually looked good, and statistically it says on, on you know, Joe Donoghue did a great article on the YEP, big shout out to Joe, um, said how in transition and with less of the ball, we win games of football. The ones we've lost this season, we've had more of the ball because we've struggled to play down, you know, to break down a low block. Will Middlesbrough do that? I don't think they will. They'll want to come and win the game, which will help Leeds United. Same goes for QPR, who'll need to win because they're in a relegation dogfight. 
So as tough as these next two will be away from home, I think they're actually in our favour more so than, you know, the pressure being on Leicester having to play West Brom and, and Southampton at home. Because if they go goal down at home, it's going to get toxic. We don't have, you know, we don't need to worry about that. But look, trust me when I say Middlesbrough will love to be singing at full time, Leeds are falling apart again and really put a dent in our promotion hopes, our automatic promotion hopes anyway. But hopefully we can stop them do that. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win. I do think both teams will score. Um, but I think Leeds United are legit, and I'm hoping and praying Patrick Bamford's that man to do it because, yeah, uh, they have fond me memories of Bamford scoring a hat trick against us. I was at that game. I lived in Stockton at the time as well, so it weren't it weren't nice. I can't lie to you. Um, but yeah, listen, smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and of course hit that notification bell. We're getting so close to 30k. I was going to say join me for the watch alongs on Saturday but this is coming out after the fact so hopefully you will join me and hopefully them results went our way hopefully Cardiff won hopefully West Brom won and uh, this will be a lot today ahead of obviously Monday night's humdinger of a game at the Riverside as Leeds United hopefully beat Middlesbrough um, but yeah that's enough from me peace out Leeds Leeds Leeds